In 2017, Misha Barton filed a lawsuit against her ex for peddling sexually explicit content recorded without her knowledge during their whirlwind romance. I learned that someone I thought I loved and trusted was filming my most intimate and private moments without my consent. This revenge porn case happened after a few years of especially brutal treatment by the tabloids. Her budding career and celebrity turned into a campaign of slut shaming, body shaming, mental health shaming. As someone who was thrust into the spotlight for something I didn't do, I can't help but wonder, why is this considered an appropriate way to treat public women? Misha, Misha up top, please. Now, I'm here in Venice Beach to speak with Misha about her battles with revenge porn and the importance of solidarity with other women. Having been celebrated in the media for your career and your work, did it ever occur to you that that fame could be used as a tool against you? Yes, I think you know I, you know what you sign up for. Once you're in the public eye, you kind of know that you're more vulnerable. But, you know, I mean, everybody's relationship with the media, I think, and you can probably relate to this, that goes through tidal waves. It, it's, it's a roller coaster ride. Misha rose to fame as a 17-year-old starlet on Fox's hit show, The O.C. The song reminds me of you. After her role as Marissa Cooper catapulted her to fame, Misha became a tabloid darling. Once she became a fixture of the LA party scene, the press coverage around her started to sour. Things would only get worse when she met John Zacharias. It was one of those things where you really can't help who you fall in love with. It only lasted like, I think eight days, nine days, and he'd seemingly studied law, was like outgoing, gregarious, funny, always made everybody laugh. And also I got to know him because of um, my actual like neighbors and friends around. It was almost like the world had vetted him for you. Yes, I felt that he was safe. How did you find out that he had sexually explicit materials he had recorded without your knowledge? Well, I didn't know forever until one of his friends came to me and said, you should be careful about him. Oh, And I, I'd already started to sense around this time that, that there was a problem. And then he started bragging about it wow. to the wrong people who came to me. But then uh, there was still no like specific proof and you would just hope that it would disappear. And then when, when did that penny drop where you were like, Oh my God. Finally, it broke in the press. I woke up one day, so my friend ran downstairs and she was like, wake up and you have to get up because, you know, this is all over the press and apparently like all these porn sites are looking to buy it. And I was like, you know, as you can imagine, completely devastated. We have seen a lot of stories uh, recently of female celebrities being targeted, uh, targets of so-called revenge porn. It's not just a number of porn sites that the video is allegedly being shot to. Was was fear the main feeling that you were feeling at that time? I don't know. I mean, I was afraid. It was a lot of things. It was a mixture of emotions. I, I'm sure a lot of women who go through anything similar feel the same kind of mixture of rage and fear and uncertainty. Yesterday, actress Misha Barton and her attorney, Lisa Bloom, held a press conference announcing their plan to prosecute someone who's allegedly shopping around videos and photos of the actress. And then I learned something even worse that someone is trying to sell these videos and make them public. I think that's what most predators are banking on, that you will, you'll have that shame inside and that you won't fight back. And to be honest, your head is spinning and you don't know what to do. But at the end of the day, like, you know, I was raised much stronger than that. When did you decide to take the case to court? What made you think this is what I need to do? Well, I knew that if he'd done it before, he could do it again. That's one thing. That was a huge part of it. And also, I had no choice. He was now trying to peddle. He was trying to sell it for money. So he put like a half a million dollar price tag on it. Did it ever, like, were you ever afraid to stand up for yourself? I mean, of course you're afraid to stand up for yourself. I, I definitely was. And don't forget, this was before, like, Me Too and Time's Up. And so, like, it was extremely taboo. 
I had no idea what revenge porn was that was completely foreign to me. Did you feel like you needed someone to tell you how you could protect yourself? Well, I mean, I, I knew what he'd done was a crime, but how to protect myself, I really didn't know. I wouldn't have known what to do. And Lisa's taught me all of that, actually, over time. She was like, you know, the point is you can go into court and file yourself and make a complaint. I mean, without her strength and backbone in it, it would have been very complicated for me. Let me be very clear to anyone who attempts to traffic in these images. You are now on notice of these court orders. You are on notice that these images were obtained illegally and that Ms. Barton does not consent to their distribution. In June 2017, Misha won a court order halting dissemination of the video and ordering her ex to stay 100 yards away from her. What was it like when you won this case in court? It was so amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful feeling to know that you've done the right thing, even if you had to fight for it. It's amazing how different I feel from when we started this case. It's like night and day. I actually, I truly do feel stronger and victorious. Did it feel like the end? Like this was over? It actually did because, you know, it's like two permanent restraining orders. I felt safe again mm -hmm. and I felt like I had fought it out which I had. I'm very happy with what the judge has decided. I think it's important that we just see like real justice happen here in this case, so. Yeah, that's why that's, it's so important to have a network of women who really stand up with each other, right? Because if Lisa hadn't come along and if I hadn't had those people around, I don't know what I would have done. Since it's happened, I don't mind talking about it and informing other women because I think it's very important that, that women know their rights. It was such a relief to go before a judge who understood domestic violence and understood the issues and to have that lawyer and people there with me who also build you up and make you strong. I mean, are you still afraid? Probably a part of me, yeah. but I don't live thinking about it all the time. But I suppose, yes, it'll always be there and, and an aggravation and an annoyance and a shame that's potentially, you know, could rear its ugly head again. Like the way that we treat women who have been put through this process, the women of the sex tapes, is they get continue to get shamed after the fact in yeah. a way. Yeah. And it's your fault and you should have known better and it it becomes who you are. And they also know like that the rest of the world is not kind when it comes to women's sexuality. Right. For what? <laughs> like mm. for trusting someone enough to like be intimate with them? Like I think we're lucky to be living in a time now, finally, when we can bring the discussion of feminism back up and women empowerment. There's strength in the discussion. Well, thanks. I really appreciate you talking about something that's like so just deeply dreadful. It takes a lot of courage to come out and say it. So thank you. The only reason why people can get away with revenge porn in the first place is because the victims, they're considered part of the problem. They're considered the ones who created this scenario for themselves. We shame women when their sexuality becomes public, whether or not they want it to. Not too long ago, people were able to get away with this way more easily. Now, I think Misha's story shows that People who are peddling other women's vulnerability are going to have to think twice because the law really is on our side.